everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today I'm going to look at astaxanthin, an antioxidant with significant anti-inflammatory properties. Dr. Kaufman mentioned it as the best antioxidant in her recent interview with us. I'll give a brief overview of the compound, then look at a couple of clinical studies which have shown efficacy in humans. We have included Dr. Kaufman's discussion of astaxanthin at the end of the video. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing some studies that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. We will use this paper, Anti-Inflammatory Action of Astaxanthin and its use in the treatment of various diseases, which is a recently released review. Astaxanthin is a red pigmented carotenoid, which has significant antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. It is also anti-proliferative and anti-apoptotic. In nature, it is produced by algae when they are stressed. It is the cause of much that is pink colored in the marine ecosystem, such as shrimps and salmon. It is used as a supplement and also a food coloring. And it is generally recognized as safe by the FDA. The anti-inflammatory effects of astaxanthin have been the subject of a wide number of trials in animal models, studying its impact on many diseases. In rodent models, it has been shown to be protective of neurons. In diabetes, where the high blood sugar levels can cause nerve damage, and also in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease models, as well as helping recovery after a stroke. It is protective in eyes, particularly against dry eye disease, a common complaint with older people. And it has been shown to reduce atopic dermatitis and generally improve skin health. This wide range of benefits is encouraging, but for today, I will focus on a couple of areas where astaxanthin has been shown to be effective in clinical trials. In the review paper, the authors report on seven clinical trials, of which four are listed here. Let's have a look at a couple of areas where the supplement has shown a very positive result. The first, showed that in young healthy women, astaxanthin was able to reduce inflammation, particularly plasma CRP levels, while increasing the immune activity and reducing markers of oxidative stress and DNA damage. Here is the paper. This was a randomized clinical trial with 42 participants taking either a placebo, two or eight milligrams of astaxanthin a day for eight weeks. It was shown that two milligrams did significantly reduce serum CRP. And at 8 milligrams, the immune system was improved, as shown by increased activity of the immune cells. And the level of a biomarker of oxidative stress and DNA damage, 8 OHDG, were lowered. I pulled a few graphs from the paper to show this graphically. The first is this one, which is showing the serum levels of astaxanthin. I included this as bioavailability is always a question with supplements, and it's good to see that oral astaxanthin is getting into the blood. We can see initially, and for the placebo, that there was no detectable astaxanthin in the blood, while in treatment group, it increased in a dose-dependent manner. Here is the graph for C-reactive protein concentration in serum. And we can see that both doses of astaxanthin reduced the level in the blood, but the two milligram dose was actually best. And for 8 OHDG, which is a marker of oxidative stress and DNA damage, we can see that this was also reduced significantly after both four and eight weeks. The second area is skin health. This trial included 31 middle-aged subjects, though there was no placebo in this case. This paper looked at the protective effects of astaxanthin on skin deterioration. It showed that astaxanthin could suppress age-associated skin degradation and skin disorders caused by environmentally induced injury. There is also a review paper of clinical trials for the effects of astaxanthin on skin. The diagram is a summary of the benefits they saw in the review, where it improved the barrier function and decreased skin wrinkling, water loss, and UV-induced damage via the anti-inflammatory mechanisms shown here. In terms of dosing, most of the clinical trials used between 2 and 12 milligrams per day, with one at 24 and one at 40 milligrams. Dr. Kaufman recommended up to 12 milligrams and said that there seemed to be no side effects with larger doses, except for possibly turning pink. Looking more specifically at safety, we have this study, a safety review from 2019. The study reviewed various astaxanthin trials. 
noting that the recommended dose varies between 2 and 24 milligrams in different countries. In the 87 human studies that they looked at, there were no safety concerns, where 35 of the studies had more than 12 milligrams per day. So in summary, astaxanthin has been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects in many animal models, which points to it being suitable for treating anti-inflammatory diseases, both acute and chronic. There is a need for more studies, but it has been shown in clinical trials to be effective in humans as well. Based on this and on Dr. Kaufman's endorsement of the supplement, my wife and I have started taking it. And now let's hear what Dr. Kaufman said about astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is the most amazing free radical scavenger that we have. It comes from algae that are angry. They're pissed off by their environment. They create this orange goo that makes the, allows that cell to survive under stressful conditions. And it honestly does the same thing for us. Um, anyone can take any, I guess usually it's anywhere between uh, four to 12 milligrams. There's no harm in taking any more of that, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, unfortunately, it does make things pink. Um, anything pink in the marine system is probably because of astaxanthin. So roseate spoonbills or feathers are pink because of, uh, of this stuff. Quail eggs or quail eyes are red because of this. Uh, salmon is red because of astaxanthin. So I think the only fear of taking too much astaxanthin is turning colors. But if you're okay with that, then sky's the limit.